Hey coders and welcome to the bucket sort explanation. I'm just going to take a minute to explain a couple things before we get to a visualization example of how it works. Bucket sort is different because it doesn't just compare elements at least right away. Instead, we create a set number of buckets, which are just a data structure themselves, such as an array or linked list. Typically you will hear, or you'll see, you just create 10 buckets. I'll do in my example, but one thing to note is you don't want to create a number of buckets based on how many elements there are in the array. If we do that, then we are really just doing a counting sort. Instead, we want the buckets to hold a range of values like you see in this image, which I'll show you more of. The idea is to store values into buckets, sort each of those buckets, and then append those values or the buckets back into the original array. Let's look at an example. Here we have an array that holds 10 elements, and for this example, we're just going to create 10 buckets that hold a range of values. So in blue are buckets. They're going to hold a range of values. The first one or bucket zero is going to hold zero through nine. The next one values 10 through 19 and so forth. Now what we'll do is we iterate through each value in the array, insert them into a function that will determine which bucket it will go into. For example, the first value 85 when inserted into this function, is going to go to bucket eight. Then 14 is going to go into bucket one or into bucket zero. And we're going to keep doing this. As you see, when we get to value one, it's also going to go into bucket zero. And we just append it to the end of the array or linked list, whatever structure you want to use. And we'll do this for the rest of them. Then once we have them in the buckets, we want to sort each of these buckets. You can do something like insertion sort or merge sort or whatever you want to do. But this, at this step, we just sort them. Then once we're done with that, we want to start at bucket zero and append each value in these buckets back to the original array. Again, something to note is if we had 5,000 elements in this array, I don't want to create 5,000 buckets. Maybe I still only create 10 buckets because if I create the same number of buckets as there are uh, values in the array, then this is essentially counting sort, not bucket sort. All right, here is the coding portion. So let's just go ahead and get started with bucket sort. I have a method called apply sort where we take in the array and the bucket size. Typically the bucket size that you're going to see is 10. So I just have that as a parameter so that we can set it to 10 and use that throughout this method. The first thing we need is our null checks and that the bucket size is greater than zero. Let's do array, array equals null or array dot length equals zero or bucket size is less than zero. And we just return. The next thing we need to do is find the minimum and the maximum values in the array, which is going to be helpful for uh, setting the range for the bucket sort. So find the min and max values in array. Int min value equals array of zero. Int max value equals array of zero. Just to start it out with some value. Now we need a for each loop to go over the whole array and find these minimum and maximum values. So for int value array, if value is less than min value, min value equals value. Else if value is greater than max value, max value equals value. Now we need to get the range so that we can ensure each value from the array goes into the correct bucket. How we're going to do that is double range equals math.ceiling, double, and then max value minus min value plus one divided by the bucket size. Basically what we're doing is we are going to subtract the maximum and the minimum values. We're just going to add one and then we're going to divide by the bucket size. This is really just a standard equation to ensure that we're always going to have a value in some range so that uh, it can go into the correct index bucket. So if we have a bucket of size 10, that means it can only have values zero through nine. In order to make sure 
that when the range is between zero and nine, we have to have an equation like this that ensures that happens. The next thing we need to do is to create the buckets. So list integer buckets, I can type equals new linked list of bucket size. So 10 basically. So we're declaring a list of integers where each element of the array is a linked list. The reason I want to do that is because we have a bucket that potentially holds 100, 1000, however many values. I'm just going to allow the collections to dynamically adjust the size of the linked list so that we don't have to worry about the operation of if we reach the maximum size of the array, then copying it, incre incrementing the size and so forth. The next thing we need to do is to create a new linked list for each bucket in the array. For int i equals zero, i is less than the bucket size, increment i, buckets of i. So for each index, we're going to say new linked list. Now we need to insert the values into each bucket. So we'll just iterate over the array. So int value array. Now we have a bucket index that we need to get, and this is going to be based off of the range that we did earlier. So we have value, the value from the array minus the min value. And then we're going to divide that by the range. Uh, actually, we need to cast this. Uh, so it's going to be int. Okay, so we're going to cast that to an int. But now we have our bucket index. And now we just add the value into the correct linked list or the correct bucket, which is really just the index of the array. So we say buckets of the bucket index. And because the linked list, we can just say dot add the value. And this is going to add all the values into the correct bucket. The next thing we need to do is sort each bucket. And we're just going to use collections to do that. But if you really want to use a specific algorithm, you can do that here. But I'm just going to let collections sort this. We'll have a for each loop. So for list integer, ooh, integer bucket of buckets collections dot sort bucket so it's going to take each linked list so we have an array size of say 10 it's going to go to index 0 take that linked list and then sort all the values in that linked list it's going to do that for all of the indexes of the array and lastly we basically need to just add the linked list in order so starting at index 0 back into the original array. So for list integer, so go over each, we need to go over each bucket. And then for each value in that bucket, we're gonna say array index, oh, I forgot to create the variable, it's okay. Index equals value. Int index equals zero. So all we're doing is for each index in the array, we just add the values of the buckets in order from index zero all the way to index nine if this bucket size was 10. All right, and what I have here is I have a bunch of tests that we can use. Whenever we go to run this, just go in all these test cases. So if we say, if you see that we start up here, it's gonna have, a, we still have a bucket size of 10 for all of, for most of these and it go ahead and it goes ahead and sorts them now this one is tricky i kind of made this one intentionally tricky so the biggest value is 2999 and essentially the range for each of these buckets or the bucket range is 300 so uh bucket of zero will hold values from zero to 299 and then bucket one will hold from 300 to uh, 599 and so forth so I just want to make sure that I could get to the very last value, um, like 2,999, kind of like within this test, and it still goes to bucket nine. There, There is a potential for an overflow, or I mean, uh, it could go to index 10 if you don't do the calculation just correct. And so if you get some errors on these tests that you've copied, it's probably because the range uh, equation isn't quite right. Maybe you just missed something, and that's okay. Well, good job. We just got through bucket sort. And something to note about the time complexity of bucket sort is in the worst case, this is big O of n squared. And the reason is because when we're in the beginning of bucket sort and we need to insert all the values from the array, 
into each of the buckets. If all those values go into a single bucket, not good. That's that's the worst case. We don't want that, all right? Bucket sort is best for uniformly distributed data, okay? It's called a, like some, I think it's called scatter gather, where we take all of the values, put them into like, make them into little sub problems, and then we sort all those sub problems and then gather them back together, okay? Don't forget to like and subscribe. It would really help me out. And comment down below if you have any questions. Other than that, here are some more videos on sorting algorithms. I'll see you next time.